Hi everybody and welcome back. I'm going to do a flip cup today. Three cups on a um, 12 by 16 which is 30 by 40 centimetres. Um, just standard stretch canvas. So I'll show you my colours. So I do have some obviously trusted white which is an opaque and my white today is the Montmartre um, titanium white. I have a lovely Amsterdam colour, which is called, if I can pronounce it, um, Caput Mortem Violet. It is a semi-transparent, you will see there. There's a um, half-filled in square. Uh, it was quite thick, so I had to add some water um, to the mix. I will tell you about my pouring medium and ratios in a minute. Um, I have some lovely pink. So I don't know if you can see how thick the mix is. I hope you can see. So this pink, once again, is a Montmartre. It's a basic pink and it's an opaque. I've got another white. I've got Payne's Grey. So Payne's Grey is a really, really good alternative to black. Um, the reason why black usually ten, tends to uh, take over, um, but Payne's Grey has got the same properties as a navy, but you can't always put navy um, with other colours, so really Payne's Grey is absolutely brilliant, it's a lifesaver. Um, I've got a light purple, so sorry, let me show you first my Payne's Grey, Montmartre, um, and it's an opaque as well. It's exactly the same as a big bottles, it's just they don't do it in a two litre bottle. Um, so my, I'll go back to my light purple. Same thing, if you can see the consistency. There's a little mount. So that's light purple and it's an opaque as well. And last but not least, uh, magenta. Always very bright and it dries beautifully. It stays shiny. Oh, it's going to be quite a bit thick. I'm just going to add a, a splash of water to it. And the magenta, once again, uh, it's a semi transparent, so great for cells. So, um, let me just add a splash of water to that magenta because it seemed quite thick to me when I, um, when I stirred it. So, um, while I'm stirring away, I will tell you about my pouring medium. So I use PVA glue and water uh, on this mix because I've just changed um, the type of PVA glue I was using. And basically, local um, craft store um, ran out, so I had to go. I'm in the UK, so I had to go B and Q. Uh, got some nonsense um, PVA glue, and it was much thicker than what I'm used to. So. I had to do a mix 60% PVA for my pouring medium, 40% water. I usually do usually sorry do 70-30. However, this um, this is really thick. So, um, and I mix my uh, paint one to one, one part paint, one part pouring medium. And there for this size canvas, I have obviously one, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, cups. And each cup, I put 40 grams of pouring medium and 40 grams of paint. So I will let you do the math. So I need to add some silicone. So it's just standard silicone. Um, I'm not um, first, you know, whether it's treadmill, as long as it's 100% silicone. Um, you can get it online for a couple of pounds, it's nothing major. Um, so I'm just going to put two drops in each cup apart from the white. I mean you can, but it doesn't make any difference, so might as well save, to save your silicone. But let me just be very careful, it's always better to use less than more. Less is more. In our world and I basically don't beat it you know you're not trying to um, um, to make even more bubbles than what's already in there you just stir it in um, a few times and that's all you need to do 
So nothing in my whites. So let me just move this. And the way I'm going to uh, put my painting in the cups, basically I'm just going to try to play with the colours and the transparency. So ideally as a priority, do light, dark, light, dark. But if you can, if you can alternate opaque and transparent or opaque and semi-transparent, um, then you kind of guaranteed sales. So that's it, that's the last one. I'm just stir the silicone in. So I will just turn my cups, some of the cups, so opaque, semi-transparent. That's an opaque. I will have to put another opaque next to it. Uh, let's put this one, this one, and I'm running out of space. I'm gonna put paint gray last. So I'm just going to layer them. So uh, considering how much paint I have, you know, three coats quite a lot, so I think I'd be only able to do um, two layers. So all I'll do, are drizzle my paint um, on top of each other. And because they're fairly thick, they will not mix. Um, if you want to do a dirty pour, which is when you uh, pull from right up on top and you want to mix, so you pour from about there, uh, your consistency needs to be um, thicker, definitely. Oh, thinner, sorry, thinner, thinner, thinner. Because um, that would be too thick to, uh, to mix, but um, it's not a dirty pour today. It is just a layered pour. So let's, let's do pink, a bit, white, a bit of white, kind of break it. Actually, I might change my order. I might put the paint grey just after the white there. I don't know why, I just feel like it. So there we go. Hopefully you can see, because I've not really shown you. All I do is drizzle on top and that is it so let me put my paint gray there lovely light purple so it's quite um it's not really the colors i you you know play with and i like i like my uh blues and turquoise and um you know maybe cooler colors um but I thought they would go well together. So let's go back to my first cup and hopefully I've got enough to do all oh, just, just, just. So we're gonna scrape as much as we can from the cup. You know, it, let's get there. That's it. You know, paint is not cheap, so you do want to uh, use as much of your preparation as you can. So, and there's one. And let's go back to the violet from Amsterdam. So, I poured all the cups in with the same paint, so in a similar order. As you will see, oh, it's really thick, and I did add water, but let's see, fingers crossed it works. Um, but you will see that they don't necessarily give the same results, which is what I think a lot of us um, like to do, uh, pouring on flip cups. Um, that's a good start anyway. If you don't feel confident to do um, more elaborate pours, advanced pours uh, with other methods, I mean, there are 101 um, techniques um, in acrylic pouring, but I think the best one uh, to start with is the standard um, flip cups because it helps you learn about the consistency that you need and then if you get this consistency right then you will know um, for let's say a Dutch pool which is a much thinner mix um, or if you want to do a galaxy pour, which is a slightly thicker mix, or a ring pour. Um, it kind of sets you on the right path 
so do practice if you're only starting do play practice experiment that's how you learn i've been doing that for a couple of years now um and i'm still learning quite a lot once you find a uh, brand of paint and a pouring medium that suits you and gives you a resource try to stick to it until you are really confident um, I would say don't try to be too brave because you will only end up um, disappointed and as I said before that is from experience so stick to what you know get your confidence in there experiment with colors and then uh, move on to other techniques so i am nearly there i hope it's not too boring for you to watch me layer the paint you can always fast forward and for those who did fast forward well done at least you did not have to listen to me um, rambling about my uh, my voices so a little bit more there that's quite a lot of them for you just sort of 80 grams seems like much more magenta than the others but maybe i just on the first layer i just didn't pour as much and the last one so fingers crossed it will not take over the other colors but i do trust paint gray um i wouldn't i wouldn't have a second a uh, layer of black for example as i said earlier on so that's it my cups are layered nearly nearly getting there and you have two choices when you do a flip cup i mean you've got more than two but um two basic things is either you flip your cup over and you just lift it which is standard flip cup or you can flip it and then drag it as um, as you go along. So you do get um, slightly different results. Then it's all down to personal taste. Look at these colours, that's lovely. Um, it's all down to personal taste. But just to show you my little cup, so that's all it is. So let's try to be brave. There we go. Let's be firm. So now we just need to wait for the paint to fall all the way down. So let me just wipe my hands. At least. And if you're wondering what all these are on my uh, on my table, um, they are basically um, puppy pads. So you find them everywhere, you know. Um, and it's really great um, not to mess your um, your table too much. Um, they soak quite a lot in, so um, for you, I put new ones, but I will use them and use them um, until I really, really um, can't anymore. So um, it's not too bad. Right, let's see. It sounds a bit more hollow. It's a bit like if you bake bread. You've got to listen to what the cup is telling you. So, I will, um, yeah, I'll just drag it down. Oh, not fast enough. Okay, let's try to corners. You need to try to reach as much as you can all the way down, but clearly I was not fast enough and the majority of the paint came from the top half, so. Let's try again. That's better. You learn. As you go along, you learn. So, I'm not to waste too much pain. I'm just covering um, the corners and really the edges, but never ever uh, pour, let's say, here or if you see um, a hole somewhere. Um, because 
the oil removal painting. So that's it. There's the third one. Oh, even better. Oh, that's it. So you see, I layered my cups exactly in the same manner. Uh, same colour, same order, etc. And you've got majority of that light purple there, and you've got lovely stripes there. Um, you never know what you're going to get. So let me just. That's it. I think it's pretty empty. Okay, let's get that out of the way. So they are quite big bubbles um i literally just make my paint so that is normal but i don't want to torch yet to bring silicone up <clears throat> let's try to thin the mix because it's quite there's quite a lot of paint as i say it was quite thick today uh, i may have to even increase the uh, amount of water in my pouring medium but i say you learn you experiment and you learn so i'm just going to try to move the paint a bit more to get a slightly thinner layer of paint and then I will torch so already quite a few um, I hope you can see quite a few um, cells popping up and then try to bring it towards you but let's try there we go so very gently move the paint on your canvas and try to cover areas that are not covered and that's how as well also how you will uh, make your cells grow and stretch them basically so let me just i need to go and see, i don't know if you can see let me turn it around so you can actually see a bit better if i do it this way that's it so let me just try, I don't want to lose too much paint, but you know, we still need to go a little bit over um, the corners, whoops, right, so let's bring the weight of the paint back in the middle, so it might be difficult to see on the video, but when you do it, you actually see where it's kind of thicker and you see where the paint moves, so let me just quickly what my hand so now i just want to torch just to see what's what's there what's underneath actually that layer then i'll stretch more and play with the composition so i do have filthy hands okay so standard torch butane propane don't get too close stay right up if you are close enough to burst the air bubbles, you will be too close. You can add cells, but once they are there, there's not much you can do about them. So, if you want to control your composition and the amount of cells you have on the painting, um, learn to control your torch. So, as a first torching, I think that is that's better. As a first torching, I think that is plenty. Um, there are quite a few clusters, um, maybe not clusters, maybe that's not the right word. Quite a few groups of um, lovely and very different cells popping up. So I will bring it in. I don't know. So now we just need to cover the rest of the canvas. And then we'll be able to see how we can play with the composition. Let me turn it around so you can see. Apologies. I do have to remember that you haven't got the same point of view as I do. There we go. So gently from one side to the other. Be on the boat. As I said before, I'm sure I have used um, this analogy in other videos oh there's something there let's try to i think it's a bit of a mixed paint but that's not too bad it's on the side and it will slide on its own i may need that's it to go that way to bring it all the way down yeah the paint is very very thick today i definitely will have to uh improve the consistency of the pouring medium with that new uh, BMQ PVA glue because it's much much thicker than my normal 
craft glue that I get on online or hobby craft or wherever. So let's try there's not that much left and now we can go for it. So we can cover these um, bits on the side of the canvas um, once we're happy with, with the top. I mean there's always drips on your um, puppy pad so you can always scoop and um, complete. So let's have a look. Let's try to do a bit more torching. So and now you can really focus on areas. Don't get too close still. Keep the silicone time to come to the surface and bring um, the semi-transparent colours up. So we'll just take our time. too much um, I wanted to burn so now fingers crossed I've got enough paint on the canvas I may not but let's learn and let's try to stretch to open these cells up so it is moving I just need to carry it from one side to the other gently on the boat See how they open up on top. So once again, let me turn it around so that you can see the crop is letting me do so. Alright, I really like the two um these two sides, and I'm not so keen on the middle, but let's see if I can maybe stretch a bit more. Yeah, I think the mix was definitely too thick. But if I can straighten the lines as well, and some people like straight lines, some people like um, curves a bit more. Um, I'm not fussy. It really depends on the on the on the painting. Um, I don't know if it's, it depends on what mood you're in. But I do like this. So it is it's very slowly, gently. That's what you want anyway. You want to take your time. You cannot rush this. If you rush it, you lose the the shapes of your cells. They become elongated, a bit like this one. Also, you can't get nice round cells everywhere. Um, unless, I don't know, maybe it's just me. I don't know how to do it properly. Um, but I've never seen any um, flip cup and acrylic pouring with perfect round cells but if you do a pearl pour but that is for another video i believe so i'm just trying to stretch but i don't think much is actually moving oh that's a shame i don't want to lose the bottom cells there but needs be Always try to bring your weight back in the middle once you've done an area. Let's see, it's very, very slowly um, dripping. Yeah, the mix was definitely too thick. So, lesson learned. I will add more water on the next one. However, I do think the colours go um, very nicely together. And it's still a very pretty painting. Right, so. I have lost my cups, let me retrieve them, stick them under the canvas, all I do to put the canvas underneath, um, I just put some masking tape, 
so it keeps it nice and clean. So, first thing first, let's see if our corners are all covered before the final torching. So just run a stick, palette knife, anything you may have under the canvas and you'll be able to collect paint of a similar colour in that area and cover your corners if you have not exactly uh, managed to cover them. Let me just put it this way. There's a cup again. Let's have a look on this side. Yep, all covered. That's lovely. Okay. So, I'm going to start to torch a tiny bit more, see if anything wants to pop up. Obviously, it's always nice to have some like, some negative space, um, um, but, I mean, by all means, if you want um, cells absolutely everywhere, just torch, and torch, and torch. Uh, um, if your mix is the right consistency, I might remove my gloves, actually, it'd be much easier. Um, they will pop up. So let me just fire. see a little bit better so all the tiny cells are now coming up that is lovely so let me get the camera a bit closer so these are pretty nice so I hope you can see and now the, the, the camera is focusing okay That's it. Not too bad. And I hope um, you enjoyed it. Thanks again. Bye.